Good morning. Cheers. It's Tuesday. How is everyone today? Tuesday, Tuesday, Tuesday. What's happening today? I have no clue. So today, I've actually already showered today. Can you tell? My hair is still wet. It's glorious. Okay. So today, I'm always really overwhelmed when overwhelmed like in an emotional way when people write from the heart and then it like hits my heart um so i think when we start putting faces with statistics or stories with um diagnoses people are more inclined to help and I've been experiencing I think several people but it's like I don't want to single anybody out but I think since I've been talking actively about the things that I'm struggling with I think that sometimes it's it bothers people but what I'm here to say is that I don't mind talking about my mental health at all and here we go I'm sitting here talking and the dog just starts licking himself <laughs> Cooper stop it <laughs> please stop licking yourself it's disgusting yes goodbye good morning Kate I'm not even kidding you I turn on the camera and the dog just goes into like a licking frenzy of his own private parts. <laughs> Cheers. Okay. What we're talking about today is putting a face and a story with statistics. So I read, well, here, I'll just start with a st statistic. Okay. So there are, wait, let me look at 40 million adults in the United States suffer from, from anxiety. They deal with anxiety on a daily basis. Only 36% of those people actually get help. So I'm one of those 40 million adults. Elizabeth is one of 40 million adults in the United States that struggles with anxiety every day. It's just different. Okay, Kate. Yeah, yeah. Why is it that animal... Sorry, Kate said she totally gets it about my dog licking himself. Her cats do the same. Good morning! Come on. Cheers, girls. Okay, so... Uh, I'm, like, getting so off topic. So I read this thing yesterday from Suicide Awareness and Prevention, and I have to read it because I think when you put a voice to a story it makes it more real than just reading it on paper or or on a computer. Okay, so here we go. So just listen. It's it's a little long, but it's not bad. My uh the day my father died, I was at the grocery store buying bananas. I remember thinking to myself, this is insane. Your dad just died. Why the hell are you buying bananas? But we needed bananas. We'd be waking up for breakfast tomorrow morning and there wouldn't be any bananas. So there I was. Lots of other stuff still needed doing too. So over the coming days, I would navigate parking lots, wait in restaurant lines, sit in the park bench, push back tears, fighting to stay upright, and in general, always being seconds from a total blubbering, room clearing freak out. I wanted to wear a sign that said, I just lost my dad, please go easy. Unless anyone passing by looked deeply into my bloodshot eyes or noticed the occasional break in my voice and thought enough to ask, it's not like they'd have known what's happening inside of me or around me. They wouldn't have any idea of the gaping sinkhole that had just opened up and swallowed the normal life of the guy next to them in the produce section. And while I didn't want to physically wear the, my actual circumstances on my chest, it probably would have caused people around me to give me space or speak softer or move more carefully and it might have made the impossible almost bearable 
everyone around you, the people you share the grocery store line with, the ones you pass in traffic, sit next to at work, encounter on social media, and see across the kitchen table, they're all experiencing the collateral damage of living. They're all grieving someone, missing someone, worried about someone. Their marriages are crumbling, or their mortgage payment is late, or they're waiting on their child's test results, or they're getting bananas five years after a death and still pushing back tears because the loss feels as real as it did on that first day. Every single human being you pass today is fighting to find peace and to push back fear, to get through their daily tasks without breaking down in front of bananas or in the carpool line or at the post office. Maybe they aren't mourning a sudden tragic passing of a parent, but wounded and exhausted, pain-ravaged people are everywhere, every day stumbling around in front of us, yet most of the time we're fairly oblivious to them. Parents whose children are terminally ill, couples in the middle of a divorce, people grieving the loss of a loved one, kids being bullied at school, teenagers who want to end their lives, people marking an anniversary of a death, parents worried about their depressed teenager, spouses whose partners are deployed in combat, families with no idea how to keep their lights on, single parents with little help and little sleep. Everyone is grieving and worried and fearful, and yet none of them wear signs, none of them have labels, and none of them come with written warnings that say, I'm struggling, be nice to me. And since they don't, it's up to you and me to look around more closely and more deeply at every one of us, at work or at the gas station or in the produce section, and to never assume that they are, that they all aren't just hanging by a thread. Because most people are hanging by a thread and our simple kindness can be that thread. We need to remind ourselves just hard the hidden stories might be around us and to approach each person as delicate, breakable, and valuable treasures and to handle them with care. As you make your way through the world today, people won't be wearing signs to announce their mourning or alert you to the attrition or to broadcast how terrified they are. But if you look with the right eyes, you'll see the signs. There are grieving people all around you go easy. That was written by a gentleman named John Pavlovitz. I might have just slaughtered his name there. But, um, which now I'll internet stalk him, but whew, how powerful, right? And I joke about this all the time. Like, I want to wear a t-shirt that says, you know, And anxiety like I, I don't I don't recognize myself as like being it's not I'm trying to change my words like it's not my anxiety like I'm working on struggling with anxiety but like wouldn't that help if we all just had like a t-shirt and we just interchange them with how we are today like struggling with food today <laughs> I've got my period well <laughs> people might look weird on that one but you know be kind to me and then it made me think and then I went on this rant um, on my own personal Facebook page about not only recognizing as adults that we all have mental health and we're all we all have mental health struggles and that we're all working on something but then like our kids so your kid comes home from school and somebody has just said something totally shitty about them. They gossiped about them. They said something really mean, whatever it might be. So you sit down and what's the first thing that you say? Maybe this isn't the first thing you say, but you're thinking it. That kid's an asshole or what a little shit, <laughs> right? Our first response is not, okay, I'm going to repair my child for the moment help them get through this and then we're going to talk about that other kid you know what's going on in that other kid's life and then show our kids that it's possible to have empathy for other people even in that moment of pain and it takes practice you know we 
we just had a situation like this. And it's not dismissing bad behavior on that other person's part. So the offender, you know, they gossip about you. Well, let's, what's going on in that person's life? It was a terrible thing what they said or did. But let's think about what's going on in that person's life too. Because that matters. There's some other human being on the other end of your conflict. My phone just said it is low battery. Good morning, Erin. Okay, so things to think about today. Should we start making t-shirts? What would your t-shirt say? My t-shirt would say, I have debilitating cramps. <laughs> TMI. Too much information from Elizabeth. <laughs> I do have to say, okay, I need a button that says I'm struggling today because you can't tell when I am and it's hard for me. Yes, yes, yes. You can be smiling and have debilitating anxiety. You know, nobody wants to talk about this ugly. So maybe I'll just start making some pins. <laughs> Look at that tiny Santa hat. All right, I get the silliness from my mother, and then she gets it from her father because he would always make silly hats and put them on his head. Okay, so maybe I should just start making pins. I've always, you know what, secretly, this might be my calling, I've always wanted to be a button maker. You know those button makers that people... You know, you like make a button. What is it about buttons that make me very excited? I'm gonna have to search up on um, online and see if I can find a good button maker. Anyone have a button maker I can borrow? Oh, oh, oh. Okay, I digress because I'm very goofy. Girls, look through different eyes today at the people that you encounter. And just treat, oh, I loved what that man said about being, treating everyone like a delicate, like a delicate flower. And you know what? We are all delicate. Even when we put up a huge, huge face of strength or anger or um, tenacity or productivity, we are just fragile beings that just want to be loved and accepted. So I, I think I'm going to go look for button makers. Would everybody, would people wear buttons? I don't know. Okay, I have to go. I love all you girls. Thank you so much for watching. Um, and have a wonderful, oh my God, Melissa. Oh, Melissa. <laughs> I love Melissa. My newest book releases today. Yay! I don't have any anxiety. Yes, that when you put something out into the world like that, like a book or um, artwork or anything that you've created, there is an overwhelming sense of anxiety. I need some Elizabeth breathing techniques. Okay, so it goes like this. You just inhale and exhale. Just breathe, Melissa. You've got this. Breathe, breathe. And your work is amazing. And you know what? Some people are going to love it and some people will not. And that's okay. So just breathe. Breathe all through the day. Get out your post-it and write a note that says keep breathing. Anyone have any good post-it things that they've been writing down? I did I did write one. Oh, it was not today, Satan. That was the one that I have most recently in my kitchen. Um, hey, Dave. Good morning. Okay, Melissa, breathe today. Girl, Kate, you're going to make it through the day. There goes the dog freaking licking himself again. Cooper, go lay down. Um, breathe today. Cut yourself a break. Wear your, oh, wear your power bra. Your world-dominating power bra. Sorry, Dave. Your world-dominating power bra. Bust it out today. <sighs> Breathe. 
You girls are great. And Dave. Have a wonderful, wonderful day. Cheers.